Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste and good morning to all. Let's uh, start with the prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmei Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhubho Vaswaha, Tatsavitra Vare Nayam, Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi, Dhyo Yonaha, Prachodaya Astoma Satgamya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamya Mrityorma Amritam Gamya Om Sehna Vavatu Sehna Bhunaktu Sehviryam Karvavahi Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahi Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So Thursdays we study Avdhut Gita. And in Avdhut Gita, the declaration is by that Dattatre Avdhut Ji. So that means he has risen to that level where he can see Brahma everywhere and in everybody. So when he is declaring it, he is declaring from that point of view. And for us to reach there, we need to do sadhana. We cannot start talking like him. It will be fake. But if we have experienced, then these words or similar words will come out. And not just the words, the actions will be like that too. There will be forgiveness. There will be unconditional love. There will be purity. There will be clarity. There will be oneness. All of that will show in our personality. But we are all still at the level where we need to do some sadhana. Sure, some of us are little ahead. Some are just starting out, doesn't matter. We are all sadhaks. We are all students. That's why we cannot call ourselves yogis. But we are definitely yoga abhyasis. We are all students. Whether a student is in a kindergarten or whether a student is in a graduate school, we are all students. So as a student, we need to do sadhana. And this sadhana is not only once in a while, sadhana has to be daily. I'm going to give you five tips to start a spiritually fulfilling day today. Then we'll go to our main studies. Because it is said that out of the many things that successful people do, one of them is that they start their day in the right frame of mind. So we got to learn how to start our day with the right frame of mind. These people, they wake up with a positive mindset and do little things that enhance their ability to work better and achieve more. In the life of a sadhak, it is equally important to begin the day with an inspired spiritual mindset. A day which has been started off with the spirit of love and devotion sets forth an inspiring tune for the rest of the day. So that's why I got these five tips and you can add more or subtract, it's up to you, but I am going to give you only five tips which you can use to start a spiritually fulfilling day. Number one, remember God and Guru. The moment you wake up, instead of picking up the phone first, first thing in the morning, remember God and Guru. 
because it is important to remember god every single moment but you must focus on remembering god and guru the moment you wake up because sometimes a dream clutter our mind when we are asleep and when we wake up the mind does not spontaneously meditate on the divine so that's why we have to remember it to do it by forcing your mind to think of god you send out a message that you will not let the mind control you during the day okay number 2 take out some time for sadhana take out some time it's very very important to do the sadhana don't think that this is the last thing on your mind or the last thing you're going to do when the day ends because morning time is excellent for meditation because mind is basically empty and untouched by the worldly influence you have not said a hello to the world yet so every day in the morning sit alone meditate on the form of god you like take help if your mind doesn't concentrate doesn't want doesn't want to think about god during that time take help of audio kirtan chant along if you wish that helps these days we have that we can just uh, anywhere we can listen to a kirtan the idea about this is whether it's a meditation or whether it's a listening to the chanting or kirtan is uh, bathing the mind and intellect in the love of god bathing the mind this is a sure short way to get rid of our material vices and to purify the heart tip number 3 watch an inspiring video or read a book instead of turning on the television for morning news it is worthwhile to watch an inspiring spiritual lecture make use of the golden hours while the mind is still fresh and alert you are all familiar with bhagavad gita pick up that the book read a few verses that will enlighten your intellect with this transcendental knowledge this morning i was listening to my guru ji's lecture he said if you remember three things from bhagavad gita which is mentioned in the upanishads also daya dan and seva if you can do this you will see that how effective this this particular reading will be to us so we need to upgrade our mind first thing in the morning before the material energy degrade it number 4 do some yogic cleansings at least one or two yogic cleansings neti vaman pranayama if you have not learned it learn it early morning cleansings they make you fresh and then your mind is fresh and you'll be able to do much better your body will feel better because unhealthy body unhealthy mind is no good nobody wants to have that so do the cleansings number 
do some yoga asanas exercise there are umpteen reasons to exercise in the morning you all know about it it energizes you it elevates your metabolism for the day it really strengthens the vehicle which god has given it to us which we call a human body it will be in a good shape to serve god after all if you have a headache or fever you cannot think elevating thought elevated thoughts so daily exercise daily cleansing so these are very very simple things to do so that's why i thought i should talk about it because when we sometimes read scriptures like our dhut gita or ashtavakar gita we think that no we don't have to do any of it because these rishis they are saying that there's only one atma there's only one thing non duality sure but we are in the duality now in fact we are in a polarity right now so we got to take care of all of this to experience what he is talking about okay so any question before we move on to our main topic and when i say main that doesn't mean this is not important this is very important too so we are on chapter number 4 of this avadhut gita first you just one question sure all these five things that you mentioned should that be done throughout the day before the day starts at least to do it in the morning before the day. not throughout the day i know some different stages of life they have different duties right but early in the morning the so all the five before you start your day before you say hello to the world okay, okay. these five things everybody should do it whether somebody is a, a teenager or in 20s or 30s or 40s but people like us who are fortunate enough to be retired right now from the material world we should do it more thank you okay so fourth chapter fourth chapter has how many verses 25 verses talking about atma so we ended our last week's class with verse number 18 we are this datta uh, tere ji is saying know that i am free from everything and again not free from anything i have no maya nor its multiple forms how can i say that i shall have to practice daily obligatory religious disciplines so he is saying it so if somebody says he is saying it i'm not going to do anything that's the reason i brought this topic today we are not abhut yet we are not even yogis yet we are just the sadhaks i am by nature blissful and free so free from everything anything when the sadhak is united with the nirgun brahma he is free from everything when he is identified with the sagun brahma brahma with the attributes he is one with everything that's how the sadhak feels and i talk last time i told you the daily obligatory duties are like which we call sandhya sandhya can be done with the prayers with the jap with the meditation with the charity study of the scriptures there are so many different yagyas we can do whatever your guru prescribes for you or whatever if you don't have a guru whatever your family tradition has been you can do that whatever feels right but do something sandhya twice per householders morning and evening okay so now let's start our class with verse number 19 samvidhi mam sarva samadhi yuktam 
संविधि माम लक्ष्य विलक्ष्य है मुक्तम योगम वियोगम च कथम वदामि स्वरूप निर्वाणम अनामे अहम संविधि मींस टू नो माम मींस मी सर्व ऑल समाधि समाधि इज दैट यूनियन वेयर वी हैव दैट ब्लिस फुल एब्जॉर्प्शन युक्तम जॉइंड संविधि नो माम मी लक्ष्य लक्ष्य मीन्स एम और लाइक अल्टीमेट वी लक्ष्य एमलेस मुक्तम फ्री योगम यूनियन वी योगम सेपरेशन च मीन्स एंड कथम हाउ व दामी से सब रूप ट्रू नेचर निर्वाणम लिबरेशन अनाम्य फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज अहम आई एम ही सेज नो दैट आई एम कंप्लीटली एब्सॉर्ब इन ब्राह्म एंड वट इज दिस आई एम द आत्मा द सोल द सेल्फ कंप्लीटली एब्सॉर्ब know that i am free from aim and aimlessness once you have reached the lakshya there is no lakshya then you are one you have dissolved how can i speak of union or separation now because union and separation is right now when we have not reached there we can say that yeah that's my aim and i need to unite but once atma has merged into the parmatma how can i speak of union or separation i am by nature blissful and free he has realized his swarup the own form and last line we see that he has been repeating it that's why it's a, such a beautiful poetry murkha api न अहम न च पंडिता अहम मौनम विमौनम च मे न कदाचित तर्कम वितर्कम च कथम वदा मे स्वरूप निर्वाणम अनाम्या अहम दिस इज नंबर ट्वेंटी मूर्ख इग्नोरेंट अफूल अपि मीन्स इवन न इज नाट अहम आई एम न नाट च मीन्स एंड पंडिता लर्न इट अहम आई एम मौनम साइलेंट वी मौनम ब्रेकिंग साइलेंस च मीन्स एंड मे टू मी न कदाचित नेवर तर्कम आर्ग्युमेंट वितर्कम काउंटर आर्ग्युमेंट च मीन्स एंड कथम हाउ वदा मे से स्वरूप ट्रू नेचर निर्वाणम लिबरेशन अनाम्या फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज अहम आई एम आई एम नीदर ए फूल नॉर ए स्कॉलर because when we say somebody is a fool or a scholar we are judging somebody from the intellectual point of view and i am not my intellect you remember that when we do the meditation we say i am not the body i am not the mind and i'm not the intellect and what am i i am the atma atma which should be joined with the parmatma so when he is joined what he says i'm neither a fool nor a scholar i am neither silent nor talkative because who talks the mouth is talking the vocal cords are making the noise atma is not talking atma never talks 
how can i describe brahm through arguments and counter arguments that's why the realized people they don't argue otherwise a little knowledge we have and we just want to convince others and we want to argue what is that common hindi proverb thotha chana baje ghana right so he says how can i describe brahm through arguments or counter arguments this is not something you talk about you don't debate about this i am by nature blissful and free again that state पिता च माता च कुलम न जाति जन्मादि मृत्यु च मे कदाचित स्नेहम विमोहम च कथम वदामि स्वरूप निर्वाण अनाम्या अहम पिता फादर च मींस एंड माता मदर अगेन च मींस एंड कुलम फैमिली no jati no caste janam is the birth adi etc mrityu death cha means end me mine na kadachit never sneham affection love vimoham attachment Germans and Katham how Vadami say, Samroop true nature, Nirvanam free, liberated, Anamya free from disease, Aham Aya. He says I have no father, no mother, no family. I belong to no race. because i am the atma atma doesn't have a father never was i born and never shall i die that's why we say atma is eternal it's birthless it's a deathless when we say somebody has died it's only the body has died atma never dies so i have no father no mother there was father and mother we have had many based on the bodies families also and how much time we waste arguing attaching thinking worrying about something which we don't even have i have no father no mother no family i belong to no race never was i born and never shall i die how can i say that i have affection or delusion like attachment i am by nature blissful and free astam gatah na ev sada uditah aham tej vitej cha me na kadachit संध्या आदिकम करम कथम वदामि स्वरूप निर्वाणम अनाम्या अहम अस्तम अस्त मींस टू सेट लाइक ए सूर्य अस्त टू सेट गतः गॉन न मींस नॉट ए मींस दस सदा फॉर एवर उदिता Udita means a reason or a parent. Udita, aham I am. Tej, light of consciousness. Tej, the radiance. We tej, no light. Cha means and me means my. Na kadachit never. Sandhya adikam. morning and evening worship etc that's a sandhya adikam karam is action katham how vadami say 
स्वरूप ट्रू नेचर निर्वाणम लिबरेशन अनाम्या फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज अहम आई एम आई नेवर डिस अपीयर अस्तम गतो न ए आई कैन नेवर डिस अपीयर आई एम एवर प्रेजेंट देयर इज नो लाइट और डार्कनेस इन मी how can i say that ritualistic injunctions are meant for me i am by nature blissful and free okay yeah. see all those sandhya adi what we do they are for the intellect they are to calm the mind because when mind is churning we really cannot know who we are so they are not for the atma we are not bringing atma with that all we are doing is just calming our mind clearing our doubts and creating the atmosphere where we can detach from everything which we are not and know who we are and then feel the oneness with the ultimate remember that because sometimes we think we are doing the sandhya because we are doing a favor to god there's no favor to god or guru this is what we are doing it because this is our duty to calm our mind to sharpen our intellect to know our self this is our duty to do okay so i never disappear otherwise you you are never gone you are always there but we are not uh, familiar with it wherever mind is disturbed we really don't see it's almost like if there is a beautiful pool at the bottom of the pool there's a beautiful design but the water is so muddy and it just keeps on shaking keep on moving we don't see what's at the bottom but when we clear the water still the water we can see what is at the bottom of the water this is what why sandhya we do a sanshyam vidhi nirakulam maam असंश्यम विधि निरंतरम माम असंश्यम विधि निरंजनम माम स्वरूप निर्वाणम अनाम्या अहम असंश्यम सी संश्य मीन्स डाउट असंश्य मीन्स डाउटलेस डाउटलेस विधि नो निराकुलम कॉजलेस or boundless ma means me again a sanshyam doubtless vidhi no nirantram eternal ma mami a sanshyam doubtless vidhi no niranjanam pure no anjan no flaw pure niranjanam मामी स्वरूप ट्रू नेचर निर्वाणम फ्री अनाम्या फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज अहम आई एम सो दत्तात्रेय जी सेंग नो फॉर सर्टेन दैट आई एम फ्री फ्रॉम डाउट्स नो परप्लेक्सिटी फ्री नो फॉर सर्टेन दैट आई एम इटरनल नो फॉर सर्टेन दैट आई एम इमेक्युलेट निरंजन i am by nature blissful and free such a great authority he is telling us who we are he is not saying that only he is we all are this so that's why he is telling us that this is the goal this is where we we all need to go dhyanani sarvani paritajyanti hi शुभ अशुभम करम परित्यजंति त्याग अमृतम तात पिबंति धीरा स्वरूप निर्वाणम अनाम्या अहम ध्यान आने मेडिटेशन यू रिमेम्बर दो स्त्री वर्ड्स धारणा ध्यान समाधि धारणा इज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ध्यान इज द मेडिटेशन समाधि इज द यूनियन so dhyanani meditations sarvane all 
परित्यजन्ति रिनाउंस शुभ मीन्स गुड और शुभम बैड सो ऑस्पिशियस एंड नॉट सो ऑस्पिशियस कर्म एक्शन परित्यजन्ति रिनाउंस त्याग आल्सो रिनंशिएशन अमृतम इमोर्टल नेक्टर तात ओ चाइल्ड पिबंती दे ड्रिंक धीरा द वाइज स्वरूप ट्रू नेचर निर्वाणम फ्री अनाम्या फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीज अहम आई एम ओ माय डियर और ओ माय डियर चाइल्ड द वाइज मेन give up all type of meditation as well as all type of actions good or bad again just remember from what standpoint he is saying it wise are we wise we are not wise yet so we we cannot give that up it's not that when we give up we become wise in fact wise when we see from outside they are still doing it but doership is gone because they recognize themselves with the atma and atma is not doing anything but as long as they have the body they will take care of the body wise people do but the doership is gone understand that key point there so oh my dear the wise man give up all type of meditation as well as all type of action to do that they drink the nectar of renunciation i am by nature blissful and free so this renunciation tyag is not a tyag of the actions tyag of the doership and the enjoyership kartapan and the bhogtapan remember that okay last verse and now we don't have a repetition of the last line over here vindati vindati nahi nahi yatr chandaha lakshanam nahi nahi tatra samras magnah bhavit putaha pralaptihi tatvam param avadhutaha vindati vindati wherever one finds so it's almost like a wherever one finds nothing nahi nahi is not is not yatr ver chandaha praise lakshanam indication nahi nahi is not is not tatr ver some means same ras essence magnaha immersed bhavit putaha becoming pure pralapati describes or chats about tatvam reality param is supreme avadhuta avadhuta is one who has shaken off the untruth that's a avadhut Okay, untruth. And what is untruth? Anything other than Atma is untrue. So Avadhut is a person who has shaken off everything. I am not the body. I am not the mind. I am not the intellect. I am just the soul. A person who has realized it can live in this reality. This kind of a tattva darshina is Avadhut. where the intellect cannot reach how can there be any composition any form of composition because composition is only with the intellect we write and understand with the intellect so where the intellect can't even reach how can intellect describe a brahma the great avadhut after purifying himself through meditations and becoming absorbed in infinite bliss has a sang spontaneously pranapati about brahma 
case over here at the end, he does say that sadhana is needed. But once he has reached there, he is talking like this. So don't start doing what he is experiencing. Just be careful. So any question before we move to the next chapter? Because we're going to do a few more verses of the next chapter, then we'll meditate. So this is uh, a uh, fifth chapter now. Fifth chapter has 32 verses. And over here, we'll see the advice uh, to us uh, that avoid all the lamentations. Uh. Why? Because Atma is the same in all conditions. Atma is not becoming less or more old or new. Atma is the same. Do not lament. That's what he is saying to us. Okay. So 32 verses. Let's start with the first one. Om iti Gaditam gagan samam tat na par apar sar vicharaha iti a vilas vilas nira karnam katham akshar bindu samuchranam. Om. We are all familiar with that sacred syllable Om. Iti in this manner. Gaditam is spoken of Gagan sky, Samam like Tat you, Na means not, Par means high or beyond, Par. You remember these two words we learned in Narad Bhakti Sutra also, in Yoga Darshan also, Par and Apar. So par is high, upper is near or low. Sar, essence. Vicharaha iti, beyond thought. A vilas, without sensuous pleasure. Vilas, sensuous pleasures of the manifestation. Nirakarnam. The annulling. Katham how? Akshar letter. Bindu dot over a letter. Samuchranam. That means utterance or pronounce or enunciation. Samuchranam. The all-pervading Brahm has been expressed by the syllable Om. And we are all familiar with that. Whether we are doing the Arti, whether we are doing the Havan, or whether we are doing the Jap or Kirtan, we always say Om. Okay? So the all-pervading Brahm has been expressed by the syllable Om. Lord Krishna talked about in Bhagavad Gita. I am Om. But its essence cannot be ascertained by either higher or lower knowledge. Both sensuous players or lack of sensuous players have been repudiated in the context of Brahma. See, that's where the annulment comes. Hence, how can the syllable Om express it? You all know that Om is called the Nad Brahma, the sound of Brahma. Those are three letters, three matras. 
that is a combination of om people try to say that different ways the throat sound a uh, and the last sound m when we put our lips together and the u we always say that like a uh, uh, then o that is like a rolling forward of the impulse so all of this is a true symbol of god kathupanishad says the goal which all the vedas declare which all austerities aim at which men desire when they lead the life of celibacy i will tell you briefly it is om the syllable om is indeed brahma this syllable is the highest he says whosoever knows this syllable obtains all that he desires he is not talking about the worldly desires worldly desires who has all the worldly desires fulfilled when there are no desires left person who doesn't have any desires has fulfilled the desires so he says whosoever knows this syllable obtains all that he desires so over here in this verse he is talking about all pervading brahma which is expressed by om knowledge cannot intellect cannot understand it we cannot say that i want to merge into the sensuality then i'll know brahm or i want to just let go of the sensuality then i'll get in touch with brahm now in the next verse what did we say इति असी प्रभृति श्रुति भी प्रतिपादितम आत्मनी तत्व असी तम उपाधि विवर्जित सर्व समम किम उ रोदिषि मानसी सर्व समम इति मीन्स दस तत्व असी दाउ आर द this has been a great dictum we often talk about this tat tvam asi pra vritti such as shruti bhi upanishadic sentences shruti bhi si shruti i'm sure you you all know the difference between a shruti and a samriti because the library of hindu literature there are lot of samritis but there have been five shrutis the four vedas and a bhagavad gita not the whole mahabharat but the part of which is bhagavad gita in the mahabharat that's called the shruti shruti means it has been it came from the mouth of god himself so four vedas and the bhagavad gita and smriti is what smriti is when we remember something somebody said it and we remember it and when we relay it to somebody else that's a smriti from the memory so shruti is another way we can understand shruti is the the direct knowledge came from god's mouth pratipaditam proved atmane in yourself tat tvam asi thou art that tvam means you upadhi upadhi is the qualifications or limiting adjuncts upadhi something which you binds you like a body is the upadhi mind is the upadhi 
Intellect is the upadhi. These are all upadhis. Upadhis on what? On Atma. We worship devoid of serve in all. Samam the same. Kim means why? Who, who means indeed? Rodishi means cry or weep. Manasi in the mind. Sarva Samam same in all. The Upanishads through their great dictums such as thou art that and I am Brahma have declared that your inmost Atma is the reality. Okay. So what he is trying to tell us that what I told you earlier, my experience, the Upanishads are saying the same thing. You are the all-embracing sameness, devoid of all attributes, upadhis. Being the self-same Brahma, oh mind, why do you weep? Why do you cry? Why do you lament? Being the self-same. So according to the Vedantic tradition, the self, the real nature of the human beings, or any being, not just only the human beings, should be heard of, reflected on, meditated upon as a part of the spiritual discipline. That's how a person becomes illumined through this repetition of practice. And in this chapter, Dattatreji is repeating this last line. Kemu Rodishi Manasi Sarav Samam. How many times? 30 times he's going to repeat this. The last line. Okay. So Kemu Rodishi Manasi Sarav Samam. Kim means why? Rodishi weep. Manasi O mind. Sarav Samam. Self same Brahm. You are that Brahm. Why are you crying? And that Brahm is everywhere the same. Because what is the reason we cry? We have to look at it. The reasons. I don't have enough. Somebody is better. Or somebody is worse. Can't go there. Can't have it. Somebody said something to us. All those negative thoughts in our mind. That's a Rodishi. That is a cry. Otherwise, in the last chapter, what did he say constantly? You are bliss. So now he's saying, why are you crying? You are self-same. You are same as Brahma. What is the reason for you to cry? So the Upanishads, through their great dictums, have declared that your innermost Atma is the reality. So we have forgotten the reality. Farther away we are from the reality, the more cries we do. You can see that anybody who feels stressed, tension, sadness, unhappiness, or even depression, any level of depression, that's all Rodishi. That means they don't know the reality. So he is telling us again and again, the whole chapter, 30 times he is going to tell us, do not cry. You are Brahman. And it's not a fictitious thing. This is the reality. We have forgotten the reality and we just have believed in the fiction. That is the sad part. So let's stop it here. We'll meditate also for a few minutes. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnase Purnamadaya Purname Vavisheshyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much.